The UK decision to also pause funding to the relief agency, the UN relief agency in Gaza, of course, the importance of that relief in a war zone, in a place like Gaza, could not be underestimated, could it? Um, what's your take? Yes, Sam, um, good afternoon. A lot of people haven't even heard about this aid agency, the UN Relief and Work Agency. It's been around since 1949. It is the principal UN body that cares for the Palestinian refugees, about 5.6 million. It operates in Gaza, as you mentioned. It has 13,000 staff members in Gaza. It also operates in the West Bank, in Jordan, in Syria, uh, and other areas. It's a huge organisation. Since the 7th of October, there have been various allegations that some UNRWA staff may have been involved in a massacre that took place on the 7th of October. Seven, that, it's seven out of thousands. Uh, out of 13,000. I mean, that allegation has always been there, but we mustn't lose sight of the size of that, that organisation. Israel seems to have presented some, some fairly firm evidence that a few members of staff, as you say seven, may or may not have been involved in that attack. UNRWA has taken immediate action. It has terminated their contracts. It's taken the right action. Cutting, cutting this age budget following the US lead is, is quite profound. The budget for UNRWA is about a billion dollars a year. The US stopped it in 2018 under President Trump, but then restored it again. You know, it was stopped a few years later. It, it's kind of on, off, on, off. But I can't think of a time in the last 70 years when this funding is more important than now. Yeah, to support indeed, the two million in Gaza. Indeed, it was part of the provisions set down, wasn't it, by the ICJ that Israel must facilitate humanitarian aid because of the worsening uh, dire situation there. Um, turning our attention to the ICJ, um, what does it mean for the way Israel is prosecuting its military strategy? Because it, it, has, it has put some qualifications on how it must do that. Yeah, I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to understand or to judge how Israel will or won't abide by these preliminary measures that have been imposed upon them by the court. Um, the court didn't order a ceasefire, of course, uh, but what the court did order is that Israel take all measures to prevent genocidal acts, including the killing and injuring of civilians. And that's quite a significant order. What we've got to see from Israel, I think, over the next month is a significantly greater distinction being applied in their targeting between combatants and civilians, and considerably greater proportionality in the weapon systems that we're using. Quite simply, they must reduce killing women, children and civilian men over the next month.